What's going on, everybody? Josh Engelman for Othamo.com, and I am back with my NFL Top 5s on DraftKings for Week 7. Now, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when everything goes live. Follow me on Twitter. Hop into the comments section. Let me know who your favorite and least favorite plays are for this week. And then shout out to Jock Market for being the presenting sponsor. Use the promo code AWESOMO. Get a little bit of extra money on that first deposit up to $50, 100% instant match. You really can't beat that kind of deal. Free money is free money, people. Go check out Jock Market today. You guys can see my defensive optimals on the screen right now. That's not all that interesting. We are now heading to the tight ends. First up at number five, we've got Mike Gesicki. He's 4,700, projected for about 11 fantasy points. Dolphins are two and a half point dogs, 47 and a half point total against Atlanta. They are the number 24 offense at PFF against the number 29 defense. No real chance for Gesicki to go for more than 30, but because of his price tag, he's got a 10% chance to be in the optimal. Now this is the guy with a ceiling $7,600 Travis Kelsey projected for 18 and a half fantasy points. The Chiefs are four and a half point favorites in Tennessee with a 57 and a half point total. This is the number five offense at PFF against the number 28 defense. And boy, is there expected to be a lot of scoring here. Five and a half percent chance for Kelsey to go for more than 30. Similar to Gasicki though, a 10% likelihood to be in the optimal. You can see just how much this differs. If you wanna to go to Travis Kelsey, you're gonna need a lot of fantasy points, but for now, he's in at number four. At number three, we're going to value again $3,700 Ricky Seals-Jones, projected for nine fantasy points. The football team, seven and a half point dogs in Green Bay with 48 and a half point total. Number 22 offense against the number 11 defense. No real opportunity to go for more than 30, but an 11% chance to make it work in the optimal. If you need to pay down, there are a lot worse options than Ricky Seals-Jones. At number two, we've got Dallas Goddard. Now that Zach Ertz is out of the stable, what word should I use there? We'll go with stable. I don't think that's the right word, but we're going to go stable either way. 4,600 for Goddard, 12 fantasy point projection in Las Vegas, three point dogs, number 18 offense, number nine defense. Again, not a huge ceiling, but 13% likelihood that he's going to be in the optimal. I think that he's really cost efficient this week. 4,600 for the amount of work that he should be able to get. I can see why he is now ranking number two for me, but tight end really flat this week. We close it out at number one, same game, $6,700 Darren Waller is here, projected for 17 and a half, three point favorites at home against Philly. The number nine offense, the number 14 defense, a decent spot, three and a half percent likelihood for Waller to go for more than 30, so it's certainly possible. 14% chance for Waller to be in the optimal lineup. That is enough to make him my number one tight end. Now we kick it over to the wideouts. We've got a pretty clear cut number one, but we're starting it off at number five with DJ Morey, 7,100, projected for 19 fantasy points. Carolina gets a really nice matchup against the Giants. Three point favorites in New York. 43 point total though is pretty terrible. This is the number 29 offense at PFF against the number 27 defense. So something's gonna happen one way or the other. 7% likelihood for DJ Moore to score more than 30 fantasy points. 16% chance that he's in the optimal. This is just too good of a matchup to pass up. I desperately wanna be around when this guy scores a touchdown. 5,300 for Jacoby Myers, projected for 15 fantasy points. Another great matchup against the Jets. Seven point favorites here for New England at home. 42 and a half point total, not ideal. The number 13 offense against the number 19 defense. You're not expecting Myers to go for north of 30. Uh, you're probably going to need some touchdowns to do that. But 17% likelihood to be in the optimal. The price looks great and the volume of work looks great. Talk about some upside here. $8,600 Tyreek Hill comes in at number three. He's projected for 22 and a half in the best fantasy matchup on the slate. 57 and a half point total on this game. We expect a ton of scoring. Both defenses aren't very good. This is the number five offense. There's a 24% likelihood that Tyreek Hill scores more than 30 fantasy points. 17% chance he's in the optimal. I don't think that I have to tell anybody anything like really crazy here. We know what Tyreek Hill is capable of, and this matchup is the one that seems like it's the most likely to make it happen. Or you can pay up to $8,900 Devontae Adams, projected for 24 and a half. Green Bay, seven and a half point favorites against Washington, 48 and a half point total. So not the same sort of overall matchup, but this is the number two offense in Green Bay against the number 17 ranked Washington defense. 
29% likelihood that he scores more than 30, 18% chance that he's in the optimal. You're probably needing to pick between the two, whether it's Adams or Hill, ownership will play a very big role in that decision. But all of these guys are pretty clearly behind my number one, that is Cooper Cup, 8,400, projected for 24 fantasy points. The Rams are 16 and a half point favorites against Detroit, 50 point total, the number 10 offense, and the absolute dead last worst defense in football here for the Lions. 31% likelihood that Cooper Cup scores more than 30 fantasy points and a 26% chance he's in the optimal well ahead of Adams, well ahead of Tyreek Hill. Cooper Cup is your number one wideout this week, but now we're on to the running backs. This middle section is pretty busy, but at number five, I'm going DeAndre Swift. He's 6K, projected for 16. They're 16 and a half point dogs in this one. This is the number 26 offense against the number one ranked defense at PFF. It doesn't feel like a good spot on the surface for Swift, but somebody's gonna have to do something for the Lions. One and a half percent likelihood that he goes for more than 30, 16% chance he's in the optimal because 6K for DeAndre Swift, even in this matchup, is too cheap for him. If that matchup is too scary, you could pay up a couple hundred dollars for Leonard Fournette, 6,400, projected for 16.7 fantasy points. Much better matchup. 12 and a half point favorites for Tampa, 47 point total. The number one offense against the number 22 defense. What's not to like here? I think he's gonna be popular too. 1.9% chance to go for more than 30. 16% likelihood is the same as DeAndre Swift. So pay very close attention to their ownership. If one guy's getting a lot more than the other, just flip flop them. Daryl Williams comes in at number three, 5,800, projected for 15.4 fantasy points in that same matchup we're expecting from Kansas City to have all of the scoring. Number five against number 28, certainly looks good on paper. Again, not a ceiling spot. 30 fantasy points only happens 1% of the time, but at 5,800, the value is immense. 17% likelihood that Williams gets into the optimal lineup, whether it's Williams, Fournette, Swift, Booker. There's a lot of value to be had in this range on DraftKings this week. Now we're on to number two, $6,100 Chuba Hubbard, 16.7 fantasy point projection for Hubbard at the New York Giants. 43 point total isn't the best. This is a bad offense, but it's a bad defense too. So if Carolina can get out in front, this could be a big one for Hubbard. Three and a half percent chance that he goes for more than 30. So, you know, you're expecting it one out of every 30 days or like one out of every two seasons if he plays every day. Doesn't seem all that likely when you say it like that but he's got a 20% chance to be in the optimal lineup because once again, we've got another guy in the five to 6K range that's easy to roster. But no one is easier to roster than number one running back this week, Daryl Henderson, 6,600, projected for 18.7 fantasy points. You guys know the drill here. The Rams taking on the Lions, huge favorites. You would expect a ton of work in the second half for Henderson if he can get his touchdowns early, all the better. This defense for the Lions is putrid. There's a 7% chance that Henderson can score more than 30 fantasy points, which at 6,600 is pretty bonkers. And a 25% chance, a quarter of the time we played this slate out, Daryl Henderson is in the optimal lineup as a running back. You cannot beat it. Now, on to the quarterbacks. Jalen Hurts is in at number five, 6,900 in this matchup against the Raiders. 23 and a half point projection, 48 and a half point total looks good. Hurts just puts up 20 plus fantasy points over and over and over again. And my wife has Josh Allen in her fantasy league. Jalen Hurts is her backup. So she finally gets to actually play Jalen Hurts. So I'm hoping for a big week for her. 18th ranked offense against the number nine defense, 8% chance to go for more than 30, just a 9% chance to be in the optimal. It's hard for quarterbacks to separate here, except for the guy that's in the number one spot. You're gonna have to pay up for it, but Pat Mahomes at number four feels pretty safe from like a ceiling perspective, 27 fantasy point projection. Huge favorites, almost a 60 point game total, which I think is kind of nuts and is going to happen at some point in time in the NFL in the near future a 30% chance that Mahomes scores more than 30 fantasy points, which you're probably going to need at this salary. 9% likelihood that he is in the optimal, which as you can see, like he can go for more than 30 and still not be an optimal play. That's what makes it really tough for Mahomes. But I mean, we're talking, you're, you're looking for at least three touchdowns, probably another one on the ground. That is the goal for Pat Mahomes this week. But what do you guys think about going to the Rams and Matt Stafford at 7,100? Revenge narrative against the Lions, projected for 24 fantasy points, two, two plus touchdown favorites, 50 point game total, and the worst defense in football. This has to feel like a dream scenario for Matt Stafford. 
11 and percent chance to score more than 30 11 chance to be in the optimal i know a lot of people are going to want to go here because well obviously they take on the lions i love it too i can't see a way around it my number three quarterback this week tied for that number two spot and that number two quarterback is Lamar Jackson, 7,400, projected for 25 fantasy points. Six and a half point favorites for the Ravens against Cincinnati, 46 and a half point total. The number seven offense against the number 20 defense. 16 and a half percent chance that Lamar can go for more than 30, plus another 11% to be in the optimal lineup. Lamar just beats out Stafford from a raw point ceiling, but either way, either one of those guys work perfectly. Neither one of those guys, however, is my number one quarterback. That would actually be Derek Carr because he's only 6K. He's projected for 22 fantasy points. They're favorites against Philly at home. 48 and a half point total. The number nine offense. So what's not to like? Philly's defense isn't scary. They're the number 14 defense. So specifically middle of the pack. Carr goes for more than 34% of the time. That's fine. 16% likelihood he's in the optimal though because that price is simply just not correct for Derek Carr who's my number one contender at quarterback this week. Alrighty, folks, that will do it. Those are my NFL DFS top fives. I almost said contenders. It's still contenders. It's the same sort of video. You guys know it. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, notification bell one last time. Go follow me on Twitter at Josh Engelman and let me know in the comments who's your favorite plays this week. You got to check it out. There's a FanDuel version of this video around here somewhere. Shout out to Jock Market again for being the presenting sponsor. Good luck this weekend. I'll see you guys bright and early 9 a.m for the nfl first look show this sunday i think i said sunday twice whatever don't want you guys to forget be there at nine